Hey, what's up guys? I'm Adi and welcome back to the series. Now, last time we wrote the markup for the blog index page uh, and this is the result. Uh, today we'll start with the CSS for it. And I'll just jump back to Coda and show you the styles.less. Now, as I said in the beginning, this contains a reset file uh, to which I have added a couple of things like the box sizing and I also reset the list styles. I made the outline none for inputs and text areas and also added the classes of float right, float left and clear both. Um, also, we have some parametric mixins. These are less specific um, mixins or functions, uh, and we can do round corners with them. We can do gradients, uh, box shadow, inner shadow, text shadow, and a couple of transitions. Okay, now the very next step is to download the bootstrap uh, grid. So if you go to twitter.github.com uh, slash bootstrap, you'll find the bootstrap homepage. You can click customize and it's gonna take you to this page. Now we only need a couple of things from here like grid system, layouts, then visible hidden classes, and all the responsive stuff. For jQuery, we don't need anything. And then go ahead, click customize and download. And it, it's gonna download a zip file that if you extract, you're gonna find a CSS folder with bootstrap CSS and bootstrap min CSS. Copy the first one and paste it in your um, CSS folder right here. So if we open this up, we'll find um, a bunch of classes like row, container, span 12, 11. Uh, these are all very fam fam familiar because we've used them in the HTML. Okay, now uh, I promised to talk about the clear fix for a bit. Now this is present in Bootstrap CSS and basically it just uses the before and after pseudo elements to um, create uh, an element which has clear both um, attribute. So basically what you're doing is adding an extra element to the parent element that self clears um, its children if they're floated. So that's very, very handy. Uh, also, we have another class here that we're going to use. It's called hide text. And it's really useful when you have like an image and you want to show it in a link, but you don't want to show the text. So in that case, just use hide text. All right, that's pretty good. So let's close this. Now let's go back to index and reference our bootstrap. Okay, so now if we take a look at our page, we can close this and all of a sudden it starts to look like um, a finished product. So all the elements are now centered in a page. You can see that we have columns now. Uh, the elements are aligning to a grid, well, almost, but it's a start. Uh, we have the grid down here. Uh, we have the footer and everything else in the page. So now let's move to the actual, to the actual uh, styling. We'll begin in Photoshop by grabbing some images. So the very first thing, we'll start from the top. We need to grab this pattern. So it's a four by four pattern. And I'm just gonna make a four by four selection like this. Okay, I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna save it as, as a PNG or you can save it as a GIF, 
whichever is lower in size. In my case, it's a GIF. So GIF, save it, adaptive HTML images. Uh, I'm gonna save it as top container bg dot gif okay next is the logo so i'll export this as as a gif or as a png i think i'll go for png and i'll do logo.png okay let's see this ad will be uh, a placeholder image so no need this this one right here the base for the comments so I'm gonna say comments base out and the other one comments base over Okay, let's do some social icons. And we'll do a new folder. We'll call them social. Dig. Let's do Facebook and Twitter. Okay, doc. Uh, let's see what else. We need this little icon here, the search icon. So I'm gonna say search icon as a PNG or as a GIF. It's really up to you. Mm, let's see, add widgets. Don't have any images here. Let's grab this it's gonna be um, quote format icon and also we'll grab this as URL format icon okay And the very last image, I'll grab a big chunk of this background, like 210 by 210. Okay, and I'm gonna export it as a PNG since I want the maximum quality for it. So I'll do main BG. Okay, now when dealing with these kind of backgrounds like if it's it has a noise to it or a texture that is repeating um, you know it's best to select a very large surface and then repeat that because it's just going to look much better instead of selecting like this bit and repeating uh, it's going to look weird so we got all of our images Let's go back to Coda and start writing some uh, some styles. So the very first thing I'm gonna do, since we're working with less, is define a couple of variables. So we'll do variables. And we'll start with this link color. Yeah, the color of the links. So I'll grab that. Then we'll say dark color. This is the color of the headings, which is this. Then we'll have the border color. All right, uh, we'll have this slightly beveled color so we'll say bevel color okay what else what kind of colors we have this light text color so light text color 
and then we have the text color itself. All right. Um, and I think we're pretty much set for colors. Now, we'll, uh, we'll turn our attention to the actual text, the, the typefaces. Uh, and we'll do heading font. And that's going to be Brie Serif with a fallback. do heading or not heading sorry I'm gonna do sorry font I'll just use Georgia all right now this brief serif font let's go ahead and open it in Google Docs so serif I'm gonna use the normal first of all I'm gonna use the link I'm gonna add it to my index right here uh, we don't need this this bit and also in the CSS font family Brie serif all right good to go all right pretty good pretty good mm, let's also define a body font And that's gonna be like Helvetica new, Helvetica um, Arial and Sans Serif. Okay, so those are all the variables that we need so far. Okay, let's write some general styles for the body. Let's start with this font. It's gonna be, let's start with the font size. It's gonna be 14 pixels on 21 pixels line height. Um, and we'll do body font. And as you can see, the changes are already taking place. Okay, perfect. So that's the the body. Okay, let's do the paragraphs. First, let's actually do the color for the font. So I'm going to say color is text color. Okay, paragraphs. Uh, I want some spacing below each paragraph and that spacing will also um, will also be available for lists so if you have a list it also needs uh, a space under it so I'm gonna do ul and ol I'm gonna do margin bottom one and a half amps I'm not doing 1M, I'm doing 1.5 because I want it to be a multiple of that line height. 1.5M equals 21 pixels, which is uh, the exact size of our line height and which is the exact size of our baseline grid that we used in Photoshop. Okay. Great. So, um, what else? Let's see. So far,
so far we have a bunch of uh, a bunch of links on on the very top so let's just quickly finish uh, some general styles for the page and then we'll move to to the to the top to the header and we're going to take care of the logo we'll apply some styles to the ad and also we'll make all the drop downs functional so body I'm gonna do this background transparent URL um, images and it's called main bg.png 00 and repeat which means it starts from top left and it's gonna repeat so now we have that noisy background I was uh, I was talking about okay and let's see what else for general styles we can target the anchor tags like paragraph anchor tag color it's gonna be link color and also we'll do a font weight of bold okay there we go so now we have um, colored links next up uh, should be the uh, the links inside lists but since most of them are present in the navigation part of the website we'll create some different stylings for those all right well uh, that's it for this video I'll see you soon with uh, the next videos where we'll tackle the header the top part of the page so thanks for watching I'll see you there